Hello everyone, thank you all for being so patient with me while I make a new video. If you're new here, my name is Chalice and I'm discussing the lore and characters of Elden Ring. So this video is going to have a lot of endgame spoilers, so you have been warned. Please just leave a like and come back later when you finish the game. Now, where to start with Malekith? So he is a shadow-bound beast sworn to protect Merica. At first I believe this meant they had a relationship similar to Rani and Blythe, a loyal protector. However, upon reading Malekith's helm, they are actually related. Malekith, Queen Merica's loyal half-brother, bore a blade imbued with destined death, and there was not one demigod who did not fear him. Either their mother or father was part beast, but that's as far back as we know about their family tree. It also might be meant figuratively, as in they were like brother and sister. Regardless, this was a rather one-sided relationship. Merica believed Malekith served her only for one sole purpose to be used as a vessel to lock away destined death. So what exactly is destined death? According to Enia, the round table hold, the rune of death goes by two names. The other is destined death. So we know that this is just another word for the great rune of death. Destined death as a concept ensures that nobody is able to die, apart from those who possess this rune in their power. This conveniently explains why the tarnished is able to respawn. It's because Marika isn't allowing us to die properly. As you follow the story, Melina will tell you, This world is in dire need of repair and death. Indiscriminate. Melina's objective is to restore mortality back into the world. She just wants everyone to be able to live and die as normal, instead of being under control of the Golden Order. Now knowing this, we know that destined death is quite a powerful ability to have, so it explains why Merica sealed this away with Malekith, so no one will be able to die without her willing so. Until one fateful night, when Rani stole a piece of the Rune of Death from Malekith in order to kill Godwin. Now I'm going to do a whole video on Rani, so I won't exactly go into what her motives were now, but as a result, Merica was incredibly angry with this and caused the event you will be familiar with. The Shattering, and on a bitter night murdered Godwin the Golden. That was the first recorded death of a demigod in all history, and it became the catalyst. Soon the Elden Ring was smashed, and thus sprang forth the war known as the Shattering. So this is why during the boss fight with Malekith, we hear him say, He won't fail his duty that was bestowed to him by the Queen. Now if you're still following, things are about to get even crazier, so bear with me. We fight Malekith in an area called the Crumbling Faram Azula. And this is an absolutely insane environment. You have floating ruins, tornadoes, beastmen, not to mention dragons everywhere. Now in this area, you can fight a dragon by the name of Placid Placidisex? Placidius? Pladisus. He is the dragon lord who once dwelled eternal beyond time. So with this information, we know that Faramazula exists outside of the time that governs the lands between. It exists in this strange pocket dimension. Now this is one of the more outlandish story elements to Elden Ring, and I don't think it's necessarily very clear what's going on here, so I'm going to try my best to back up everything I'm going to say with sources to try and strengthen my theory on this. Okay, so let's backtrack a bit. At the beginning of the boss fight, in Phase 1, Malaketh is referred to as the Beast Clergyman. We don't find his name out until Phase 2, when he draws upon the power of the Rune of Death to coat his blade. That's why he says, More death. Become my blade once more. Now the reason why the term beast clergyman is significant is because back in the real world, you may be familiar with another beast clergyman by the name of Gurak. D tells us where we can find Gurak in the bestial sanctum, and his quest involves being fed something called death root. Now the theory is that Gurak in the present day is actually Malekith, who's in this pocket dimension. Now I've collected a fair amount of evidence to support why I think this, so please stay until the end and let me know if you agree. First of all, death root itself is a byproduct of the rune of death spread across the lands between, through the underground roots of the great tree, the earth tree, sprouting in the form of death root. Who would want to eat such a thing? It doesn't sound very appetizing. Apart from maybe the former possessor of the rune of death, 
as some kind of sad reminder of what used to be. So part of Gorek's quest is to collect and give him nine death roots, and as you feed him more and more, his appetite for the death root seems insatiable, and he demands that you bring him more. Around the fourth death root, he will actually become hostile towards you and start attacking you unless you bring his HP down. This could possibly be a side effect of consuming death root, which hints this might not be just the need to consume it, but more like an instructed punishment. It doesn't sound like a nice experience. Greg says, I won't forget again my appetite, my sin. This could be a way of Marika trying to teach Greg a lesson. If Greg is Malaketh, this could be a way of Marika trying to teach a lesson for letting him part with the rune of death. And as a result, he now has to eat these plants which have sprout from her deceased child and suffer the consequences. Another theory reasoning, he will teach you an incantation called Gorek's Beast Claw. Now if you read the description for this, it says, Long ago, Gorek was a beast of such terrifying ferocity that his former name meant death of the demigods. And who do we know who was feared by the demigods? Malaketh. The ninth and last death route that you give to Gorek, he screams out. <laughs> America, is this what it is to sin? Will things never be the same again? <sighs> Tarnished, my thanks for thy long labor. What I have done, all I can in this land. Henceforth, mine appetite shall be my sole companion. Farewell. And with a final howl, his body fades away. Once you've given Gurek all nine of the death roots, and then you go and fight Malaketh, you will actually unlock a different dialogue option. Instead of saying, Thou who approacheth destined death, I will not have it stolen from me again. He appears to recognise us, he says. Tarnished. Why wouldst thou? Why? That he recognises us as the tarnished, and questions why we have done this. In the land of Pharaoh Missoula, it doesn't really explain the exact connection it has to the real world, whether it's in the past, the future, or some other parallel universe. It seems to have some interaction to an extent, as how would Malaketh know who we are, as it's our first time meeting him. In addition, Malaketh still exists in this universe, despite Durek disappearing or allegedly dying after we've given him the ninth death route. I personally believe Faramazula exists somewhere in the past. Gurek, who we had seen before, is actually the future version of Malaketh, forced to repent for his actions. Now, the final line of Malaketh's remembrance refers to Marika and says, even then, she betrayed him, and it's not quite exactly stated what this betrayal is referring to. If you preemptively go and kill Gurek without giving him any death root, he will say, Now, the word gull means to take advantage of, to cheat, to betray. And with his last words, why shatter, it might explain what this betrayal is referring to. The betrayal is when Marika caused the shattering. However, it gets even sadder. If you give Gurek all nine death root and then defeat Malaketh, you will get a different dialogue option as well. He will say, Even after everything that's happened to Malekith, he still apologises in his final words. He asks for forgiveness for not being able to right Marika's wrongs. Now, if you're still not convinced that Gurek is actually Malekith, there are a couple of other reasons why. The bestial sanctum where we first meet Gurek, we find there is a large gargoyle outside guarding. If you read the description for the weapon that the gargoyle drops, it says, This weapon was mended with blackened corpse wax. 
Such is the mark of those who serve Malaketh, the Black Blade. It would make sense that a creature sworn to Malaketh would be in charge of trying to protect him and trying to stop us from prematurely killing him, but letting him suffer in his quest to eat all the death root. It seems like too much of a coincidence for this type of creature to be outside where Gorak is. Now, one final finding of mine, which might lead to a deeper meaning to one of the endings of the game. Gorak awards you with a beast eye, a claw-marked stone eye, it's said to tremble when near death root. Now, look closely at what this eye looks like. Does it seem similar to anything you might have seen? In the Frenzied Flame ending, we see Melina's left eye, what it looks like underneath. Some people have theorized this might be what Rani's eye looks like. However, I think it could also be the beast eye. So tell me what you think. I've edited the beast eye over what it looks like in the socket and I've adjusted the lighting. The claw marking kind of matches Melina's mark on her eye as well. We know that Melina is linked to the whole destined death, having it been her whole agenda throughout the game. So what this ending means is still pretty open in terms of interpretation. Meliketh is definitely one of my favourite characters. In terms of alignment, he definitely seems to be a good character who really hasn't done anything wrong. He's just been a pawn of Marika. As always, please give me any suggestions for any characters, environments, any story elements you'd like me to cover in Elden Ring. I'm having so much fun doing this, guys. Honestly, thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. Uh, it means the world. Bye, everyone.